All right, we are cutting out our elements just roughly. And so I cut out the pizza with a perfect circle using the ellipse marquee tool. But now I'm going to try cutting it out in a different way. Instead of using the lasso and just doing a rough cut like this, which is easy enough, I just hit Command J. I'll move that out of the way. That's another option. What I can also do is use the magic wand to select something. So we've seen this in a limited way, but the magic wand, remember, you can set it to be contiguous or uncontiguous. I want it to be contiguous. I'm going to use a tolerance of around 32. And so when I click on the black pixels, I'm in the wrong layer. So deselect. There we go. When I click on these black pixels, it's going to select everything within a tolerance of a third, basically. And then I can hold down shift and add to that and basically get all of that background and then delete it. But it says it has to be rasterized first. So I could right click and rasterize or I could do this handy trick, which is select the inverse. So that's everything that's not selected. And then command J. Which will give me the pizza at its edge with all this little debris around it. And so I have kind of three options. <laughs> do I want it perfectly circular? Do I want it this way where I then have to like trim it by hand later? Or do I want it this way with the debris? I think I want it with the debris. I think that's kind of funkier, maybe a little bit more interesting. So I can delete these other ones. Whoops. Deselect, delete, delete, and delete the smart object that it came from. Because we only want to keep in PhotoP, we only want to use the memory that's that's needed for us. Now this one, this pretty much fills in my background, but I'm going to size it using free transform, edit free transform. And I, because it's organic, I can stretch it by holding down shift just to be that kind of moody sky. And that's what I want it for, the kind of cotton cloud sky. And I like this angle and this gradation on it as well. And because I'm not cutting anything out of this, it's the background, I'm just going to right click it and rasterize it. And then I'm going to move it to the bottom. So everything else is going to go on top of this. So for now, I'm going to actually turn it off because that's my first placement. It's a good time to save because I've already named it. I can just hit Command S now. And I, I know where it's saving. It's saving right there. And you can see it change. All right. Now, my next element, my goulash. What do I need? Rough cut it out. I want quite a bit of overlap. So even though that parsley is probably not going to make it into the finished composition, this is going to go underneath my, my fried duck. I want all this soupy goodness. And maybe some of these noodles. So if you ever want to augment your selection, you can hold down shift to get more of it. These noodles are very out of focus, but... They could be good overlap. And if you want to subtract from your selection, you can hold down Option and you can take away. Hold down Shift to add. Hold down Option to take away. And if it's working differently than that, it's these settings. This is an additive setting. This is a subtracting setting. This is an overlapping setting. This one is incredibly confusing, not very useful. So I just keep it on the default regular setting of replace. And then if you want to add to it, you just hold down shift. If you want to subtract to it, you hold down option. Now that I've got that, I hit command J, duplicates it, delete the smart object under underneath. It rasterizes it automatically. My hamburger, just like the pizza. Let's try the magic wand. Select around it, hold down shift to add to that selection. And then I'm going to do select inverse and then command J and then delete. You can, when you use the magic wand, you'll get little bits of debris. You'll get little halos of pixels. 
but we'll be learning how to clean that up as we do refine cutouts. All right, spaghetti. Spaghetti is just like the pizza and the hamburger. It's very easy to select out all this white space. And I can't just delete it without rasterizing it. So instead I select inverse and then I duplicate and then delete the smart object. Okay, now I've got all my components roughly cut out. So now I can place them. And that's our goal for today. So first, the background's in there. The problem is my background covers up my sketch. So I'm going to do that trick we did for our emoji. And I'm going to take my background sketch now, duplicate it, Command J, move it all the way to the top of my list of layers, stack of layers. Then I'm going to take its opacity down to about 25, onion skin it. And then I'm going to lock it with the padlock. So I can just turn it on and off. And this is a big file in Photo P, so it's lagging, but it's all there. You can hit Command S and save. <laughs> okay, now the next step is I've put the background where I want it. Now I'm going to build it from the back up. So this is my background image. Next, I'll have my pizza. So I'm going to grab my pizza with auto select layer. And I'm going to put that where I think it might go. I'm not going to free transform it yet. I'll just keep it at the size I, I cut it out. Next, what do I have? Uh, I think this one. That's in front of the pizza in one place. Then I have the spaghetti. That needs to go in front of the pizza. Yeah, so something like that. Rough placing. Then I have my hamburger. That needs to go in front of the spaghetti. I think, what does it look like behind the spaghetti? Yeah, we'll put it in front of the spaghetti for now. If I want to turn off my sketch, you can kind of see how these four elements now are working together. This one has that white background, so I could use Magic Wand and cut that out a little bit better with Contiguous turned on. If I didn't have Contiguous on, I would be also deleting all the little white highlights in that greasy chicken, and I don't want that. So that's why Contiguous matters. But these are still rough cutouts. Okay, next, I need the turkey. Oh, I'm still on magic wand. Go to the move tool. Move this in. Ooh, I like how that turkey leg is overlapping with the uh, the hamburger mountain. But really, this just looks like a plate of or a table of food. So this will be tricky. How to add enough atmosphere? Okay, now I want that. It's a roast duck actually, which is one of my favorite things. So. That roast duck needs to sit in a pile of a swamp of goulash. So that goes behind it. And you see how that becomes middle ground that kind of fills in the space. And so this really should be on top of some things and behind others. So this is loose because there's a lot of overlaps that will be erased out. So I've still got my spaghetti there behind the duck. You know, I've got my goulash. I might want to stretch this, edit, free transform, hold down, shift. It's organic, so it can be stretched like this. Okay, make this a little bit bigger then place the duck on top, maybe over here. Okay, next, the french fries. And they need to go up above everything else in the foreground. All right, 
So now I have things roughly placed. Now I can start cutting them out a little bit better. I can start with the foreground or I can start with the background. In many ways, it's more helpful to start from the foreground so you're not cutting away things that, that don't matter. So this is tricky. This is really the only element I could find on Pixabay that's going to work, but it has such variable focus in it. So I'm going to turn my guides on, command semicolon, and see how much of those fries I can get in there. I might play with transforming them a little bit, maybe giving them a slight tilt. I could try flipping them, but no, I like them the other way. And I got to get rid of all of the space in between them. I'm not so concerned with doing that perfectly yet, but I want to see if I can get the focus I want. So this already shows me I want a little bit more space for my sky, so I'm going to move my guide up a little bit because I don't want my, my composition to cut off my pizza and my french fry. So now I'm going to try something which I don't usually show in the class, but there is a way that PhotoP and Photoshop raster programs can attempt to bring more focus to something that looks soft. It's a cheat but it's under filters. And usually we'll only use filters to blur focus, but you can try to use it to sharpen. And the way I like to do it is sharpen, smart sharpen. So this is under filters. And I'm only on the, the, the French fry layer. And then you can just try the amount of sharpening. All this actually does is it it detects if a pixel is surrounded by pixels that are more than 50% darker or lighter. And if it does detect a pixel that has pixels around it that are more than 50% darker or lighter, it will increase that contrast. But if the pixels around it are less than 50% different, then it will keep it the same. So it detects edges and it will increase the contrast around such edges. And my worry about it is that it takes a lot of processing and this is already a really large image. So maybe before I do, you can start to see in the preview how it's starting to sharpen it. But before I hit okay, cause there you go. Before I do it, I'm gonna save some memory. So now that I've got everything lo loosely placed, how can I save a whole lot of memory? Yeah, I don't need all this empty space anymore. That was to just be able to cut things out and arrange them. So I'm going to use the crop tool again, and now I can go much closer to my original. I'm not going to go right to the image yet, because I still want to have some, some play with space to move things around. But I can get away with doing this. And that's going to save it quite a bit. And then I'm going to save my work. And now I can go in. So don't stay on the crop tool because it's a scary tool. But now I can go in and I can try that on the French fry layer, sharpening it. So filter, sharpen, sharp, smart sharpen. Take my amount up, take my radius up. That's how many pixels it affects. Come on. Okay. So how can you tell if it's working? It's very slight. You can see right here that that increases the contrast and sharpens it up a little bit. The other tool to sharpen is right in the toolbar. It's underneath the blur tool. And this makes it so you have a brush that I'm going to make soft edged that where I want it with my tablet and stylus, I can just sharpen the edges I want to have more contrast. Now this is gonna work a lot faster, but it's also gonna push it really, really grainy really quickly, right? But I definitely want this one tall one. I don't want these background ones. I'm gonna cut those out, but I want that tall French fry. And I want to be able to select it. I kind of want this background.